Hey everybody, this is Jim at sp500chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. Uh, this is a, uh, a teaching video on uh, discovering some of the principles uh, of technical analysis in how to read uh, stock charts. And as always, uh, I have to say that uh, uh, you know, uh, no form of analysis of financial markets is foolproof. If it was, we would all be gazillionaires. And we know that that can't be the case. Well, I don't know, the way they're printing money these days, maybe, maybe in a few years. But for right now, at least, that's just not going to be possible. So somebody, uh, the stock market is a place where money is being taken from those who are impatient and those who were not knowledgeable and is being uh, funneled into the hands of those who are patient and who are knowledgeable. So there you have it. Uh, at any rate, uh, I need to let you know that uh, the website, sp500chart.com, and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. And uh, nothing has changed uh, in the in the past uh, uh number of weeks. I'm still not a licensed financial professional, and I am still just a guy who draws lines on charts. Today's lesson is going to be uh, basically why does resistance turn into support and support turn into resistance? And we're going to look at it at an interesting chart. Okay, we are looking at the chart of uh, PZG, Paramount Gold Mining Corporation, and uh, we're looking at this chart because it has some fairly uh, nice and interesting characteristics to it. And one of those characteristics is the fact that for almost two and a half years, Paramount could not get over about a ooh, two bucks, a buck ninety five. It couldn't get over that level to save its life. And. Um, and let me show you what happened here. Uh, here's a back in uh, uh, summer of 2008. It got up to right at two dollars or two dollars and ten cents. Got slammed down, and uh, then it then it rallied back to about a buck eighty eight or so, buck eighty seven. Couldn't do it. Rallied back to about two bucks. Couldn't do it. Tried it again. Couldn't do it. Tried it again. Couldn't do it came up this time even shorter on that uh, and by the way uh, this line isn't on here but those of you who know charts a little bit uh, would recognize that once that line broke this thing was going to go off to the races that line did break and by the way uh, it just so happened that I'd been following this stock really closely and made an alert to some of the uh, viewers at the sp500chart.com that I thought this was on the verge of a breakout and a bunch of the people who were who were on board back in late uh, 2010 uh, got a really nice uh, pop as as uh, this stock doubled. But anyway, that aside, we've also had others that <laughs> didn't didn't do as well. But that is the nature of this. Uh, so anyway, but that's not what I wanted to show you. What I want to show you is let's highlight this line. Let's make this line green make it darker green shows up a little better there we go now let me show you what's interesting after uh, what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, yeah j actually just shy of three years of uh, PZG not being able to break that let's call it a two dollar barrier all of a sudden it does so with a vengeance okay really makes a strong move in just a, just a few weeks and it tops out okay topped out actually uh, on a little head and shoulders pattern right here and by the way what did it do made one little pullback came down made another pullback to that neckline we, we're going to talk about head and shoulders patterns a little bit later on uh, but this is a perfect little head and shoulders there and since uh, that top was made, look what happened when it came back to that green line. 
twice it has hit exactly on that line and twice it has rallied back. Now I want to ask yourself, you need to ask yourself why is this line now magically providing support whereas for, for almost three years it provided hard, hard resistance. Well, think about it. Think, think about the psychology of, of uh, investors. Think about, now I'm not talking about day traders. Think about investors for just a second. Let's say that, uh, let's say that you'd picked up on this pattern in PZG. Uh, and, and, when, when, and when it couldn't get over 210 here and it rallied back to this point, maybe you bought it back here and you said, you know, it couldn't get over 210 back here on that rally and before it sold back down or maybe a bunch of people bought in at this level right here and it sold down and they said you know that's that's close enough I'm within 15 percent of where I bought this thing instead of being down uh, what 90 percent uh, I'm, I'm up I'm now down about 10 or 15 I'm cutting my losses here and that's when it sold back down okay then it comes back this time a little higher and it gets back to about a buck ninety something, but people say, for again, people who uh, who maybe didn't get out of here and saw it sliding back down, they thought to themselves, well, you know, I'm going to get out of this here, and uh, because now's my next chance. So they get out. Comes down, not quite as low. Comes up, and again, there are people who are buying here too, and there are people all along this this uh, th almost three-year period who convinced themselves, hey, here's the way PZG works. And I know this is true because I was on a P I I've, been, I've owned PZG before, and I was on a PZG uh, board, and people were all saying, look, when it gets up to a buck 80, buck 85, sell it. Always sell it when it gets there. Okay? Because they said that's what it does. It's never going to break two bucks again. It's just stuck under $2, so sell it when it gets to $2. And everybody, not everybody, but a, a large percentage of people grew accustomed to that thought, so they would sell it when it, get to, when, when it would get to a buck eighty-five, a buck ninety. You know, they weren't going to get greedy and say, I'm not going to wait for the full $2. I'll, I'll take a buck eighty or a buck eighty-five. Well, all of a sudden, uh, those sellers become fewer and fewer, and, uh, and PZG has some good news, and it breaks up over two bucks strongly over two dollars I mean like within a day it's it's up 260 or 250 or something like that well now now this is where you have to listen what's the psychology what's going on all these people who know PZG as a stock all these people who sold when it got around two dollars how smart are they feeling now when PZG runs up quick to uh, over four dollars what are they thinking to themselves dead gum it why did I sell at two bucks? Why did I? That was stupid. Why did I sell PZG at two dollars? So what do they do? Well, if they're patient, they let it work its little deal out here with the top, and then they put it on their radar, and maybe even they have a good to cancel till canceled order in that says, "I will gladly pay you two dollars to own PZG shares once again." Just out of curiosity, I'm going to go to a 30-minute chart, and let's see where that level actually is. It looks like this was at $2.01, and about one cent. And right here, uh, right at $2. So, you know, what do you, what do you figure the, the chances of that are? probably not too good that it would bounce twice right at that exact level and that exact level would be r really kind of the center of gravity of where this hard resistance has been for such a long time so that is how resistance gets turned into support once it's broken and broken you know clearly broken so, uh, you know, if uh, PCG were to come back down to two bucks, guess what? I'd buy it next time. It's been kind of off my radar for a while, but uh, I, think, I think I would probably want some PZG shares if, if it gets down there again. Now, just hypothetically, uh, we had this line down here 
that wasn't quite as long standing as this green line and it's not quite as flat either. But what would have happened if instead of breaking up here this had gotten turned back and sold down to 55 cents and then it started to rally back? Guess what would have happened that time? Probably it would have found that line again and then sold back down because the, the exact opposite is also true and that is support once it's broken becomes resistance and let's go to the, through the psychology of that let's pretend again we're gonna have to use our imagination because PZG took a different took a different turn but let's use our imagination let's say that uh, that you were a dip buyer in PZG and every time it got down to uh, a buck fifteen or a buck twenty five, something like that, you would buy it because you knew you were always going to be able to sell it. In, you know what I mean. You you thought you could always sell it for something north of a buck eighty, buck eighty five. So you buy it at a, at a dollar. Uh, uh, what is that? Let's call it a dollar ten. You sell it for a buck eighty five. Comes back down. Oh, good. It's back. Yeah, maybe not quite to a dollar ten. I'm not going to get greedy. I'll buy it back at this time at $1.21. And you sell it at, well, let's not get greedy. You sell it at a little bit less than what you got for it back here. Then it comes down and you say, okay, third time is, is going to work again. I'm going to buy it here at a, at a buck twenty-seven, And then all of a sudden, the bottom falls out. Boom. And you're going, uh-oh. You, you bought it for a buck twenty-seven. you and a bunch of guys. And uh, or or women, and I don't want to be sexist, but a bunch of people bought it for a buck, and uh, and and uh, you know, what a buck eighteen, let's say, and it and it crashes down through this line. What's your psychology now? Well, the psychology now is I just want to get out even, so it rallies back, and once it gets to about your price, you say even is good, having sat through a fifty uh, percent paper loss, which is a real loss, but having sat through a 50% loss in my account on this stock, if it gets back to where I can get out even, I will gladly do so. So it comes back up to that break even point, and then all of a sudden all of those people who were the dip buyers before now become the peak sellers. So that's how resistance, once broken, turns into support and that's also why support, once broken, tends to turn into resistance. This does not work 100% of the time. But armed with this knowledge, you would be surprised how many times in a chart you can see this kind of thing uh, going on. And uh, so anyway, hey, ta uh, appreciate you taking a look at this video. And I have to be honest, I've got an ulterior motive. Uh, I'd like for you to come by sp500chart.com and uh, check out what we do and consider the uh, daily S&P updates that I do uh, after the close. Oh, my goal is, I can't say 100% of the time because every now and then something's going to happen. But I'm going to say 95% of the time, if the markets are open, I have an update that uh, pretty much centers on the S&P 500 uh, chart using these old school technical analysis techniques. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it helpful? I think it will be. And uh, the, uh, the subscription is less than a cheap cup of coffee per day. Uh, it's $19.95 for a, per month, $189.95 for a year. Folks, there are people who charge $189.95 for a month. Now, of course, they're doing more than what I'm doing, but you get the picture. And, uh, and also, every single subscription starts out with a two-week trial that is only $4.95. And uh, you can cancel at any time. Uh, though I will let you know if you sign up for a year, you've signed up for a year. Uh, so uh, anyway, I appreciate you uh, considering that. Come on by, take a look, check out the videos, and thanks for watching.